just walking with a blanket on sleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's what it is. Okay. Tonight you will remember you'll be like, oh yeah. Crazy. Yeah, so anyway, we turned back on home at uh, 8 p.m. We actually got uh, another visit. Man, what's been it? What's been it? Uh, there were four I wanted to show my family. And we were so poor yes. we couldn't pay it. Oh, yeah, Candace versus uh, I didn't wind up a versus uh, Donald Trump. So Candace versus Trump. Uh, uh, a short bit. Not a one minute. Bro, minute bro, like, you can't just sweep people all the So uh, uh, that comes on in step five. Make sure you check it out. All of them are here. Get the like and share. And uh, subscribe. And get the notification bell. So you can have time. So what are you doing? But the majority of the people that grow up like you described, they end up in a bad situation. We need to do something to put them on a different track. I did. He was a falling down, out of control, violent drunk. But we're going to have another father in this conversation. Next. <laughs> Well, y'all done got, got Dr. Phil pissed off at you. <laughs> Trying to be uppity. So conservative in your views. Man, that's just crazy, man. I mean, dang, man. I know some people got political opinions, but damn, but... You put that on a national stage and say something like that. <laughs> oh my God, that's crazy, man. Fair use. Teachable moment, but. Yeah. I, I had to film this one. It, cause some people ain't going to believe this. <laughs> some people ain't. That's why I got this on video. But I mean, you know, I mean, you just never know. Some people just say anything outrageous, and then you know, the user, uh, a user, uh, use a platform to be that conservative and narrow-minded. To have that be that narrow minded and everything. So, we ain't gonna believe this, man. Jesse Lee Peace and Anton say the most craziest things online. I, now that they took their YouTube, took from whatever's on YouTube to Dr. Phil show. <laughs> oh my God. It's like, dang. If he got, if he wants some attention, he got some attention now. <laughs> Anton and Jesse, they want some attention. Because <laughs> when they get back online, <laughs> everybody go recognize who they are. <laughs> Especially on YouTube. You guys know how YouTube is. YouTube gets on feed. And whatever YouTube, YouTube gets on feed, man, you know. <laughs> What is this? Albert Pike and Al Sharpton. Wow. I'm just taking commercial break, so I'm flexing on another video. Back to Dr. Phil. All our law, we've been having a procreation debate. And if children really are the future, I disagree with some people here uh, vehemently. I, and I, that's okay. Um, I, and I hope it's okay with everybody here. What we need to do is listen to each other.
talk about things, put it out there. And I'm going to add one more person to the debate virtually, uh, and that's Waj Ali, speaker and co-author of Go Back Where You Came From, and other helpful recommendations on how to become American. Uh, also a father to three. Uh, Waj, thank you so much for joining this conversation. Dr. Phil, thank you for having me. According to my immigrant parents, I finally made it in America because I'm on Dr. Phil. So That's right. Here you go. So if you've been listening to this conversation, what's your reaction? All right, so it's been wild, but I'm going to do a very ra- I'm going to give you a radical proposal. Here it is. Investing in people. Investing in women. Investing in parents. Investing in workers. Investing in immigrants. Investing in children. Investing in a community and realizing that we're a connected, globalized community. And I'll say this. In this country, the most powerful country on earth, we're the only industrialized country, Dr. Phil, that does not guarantee paid parental leave. We don't have subsidized child care. So if you're not investing in women and parents, why are you surprised that people cannot afford to have kids? That shows if women get educated and urbanized, they can actually go down to about two or three kids per uh, woman. And then in America, if you make it easier for people to have kids, guess what? They have kids. A couple times what's been brought up in this conversation is the idea of family. And one of the things that I think is important, especially in the watch mills and watching things like the HLA League, is we can create policies that make it sustainable for people to have children. We can also continue to provide access to reproductive uh, services that let people make that choice in an individual way. It empowers them. But when we get into the context of picking and choosing, writing policy that circumscribes one group in and out, um, I think that becomes quite worrying. Um, in terms of the type of policy direction we're taking. Look at money the government is spent investing in people. Things have all gotten worse. They have not gotten better. If there is any person that dies, it should be encouraging men and women to be married, to raise their children, to be responsible for them, guide them in the right way to go so when they do become adults, they could go out into the world and provide for themselves. We're taking care of them, but we shouldn't. It's really a show to sit around as privileged people, wringing our hands, concerned that we aren't creating enough young people to be able to grow into the societal roles that will pay for our care as older people. If we are not willing now to create a nurturing society that allows people to comfortably have families. Watch made some beautiful points, and I thank you very much for your addition to this conversation. Evidence shows that investing in people, investing in communities, investing in our social connections allows people to be their most resilient selves. We don't enter this world on an equal playing field, and we ought to be able to assist people on their journey rather than punish them as though it's some kind of civilizational sacrifice we're making when we dare to be compassionate and caring and create a nurturing society. Well, since it's my name on the wall, I'm going to get the last comment. I think one of the imperatives here as people uh, is to procreate, it's, it's to have children, it's, it's genetically wired into us, it's our purpose. Uh, you talked about that in, in having your children. And uh, Robin and I have two sons, and I, I have to say it was what motivated us and gave us purpose in life and purpose in living. And I, I believed for a long time that the reason that Robin was put on this earth was to be a mother. And I believed that until they had children, and then I believed she was put on this earth to be a grandmother. We all have a reason for being. And I've never had more of a passion and a purpose than when I became a father. I've never seen my boys have more of a passion and a purpose to contribute to this world than when they became fathers. And I think it's just part of the natural rhythm of being human beings. Are we going to bring them into a perfect world? We're not. It wasn't perfect when we had our kids. We didn't invent this, but I think what it does is when you have those children, you become more driven and committed to making the world a better place. And I think that's what will ultimately drive us.
us to making this world as good a place as it can be. I think that's what moves us. I think that's what motivates us. You also might be motivated to make sure you're the best version of you that you can be. I will tell you about one key way to make sure that happens next.